Hello, Leah. Thank you so much. Our Hepshibah praise team and Hosanna choir for that beautiful and powerful praise. May we live according to Christ. So we had our Easter Sunday last week. And Easter always reminds me of walking into a dark tunnel and then finally getting to the end of that tunnel into a bright light. So now we had our cold winter pass and we have this beautiful... Uh, spring time that is approaching us warm weather with all the beautiful flowers and and trees blossoming so i want to thank jesus christ for dying on the cross and for giving us this new life and this beautiful nature this creation that is around us that is surrounding us right now so today, through John chapter 19, verse 28 to 30, I'll share a message entitled, The Life of Taleo. The Life of Taleo. So today's text in John chapter 19 records the last moment of Jesus on the cross before his death. Everyone will encounter judgment. If you are born here on this earth, there will be a time where you will face death. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. So if you are born here on earth, there will be a time where it will end. So this is telling us that our lives here on earth, when when a person is alive and breathing, he or she lives with hope. But when death is mentioned, people tend to become very sad and fearful and hopeless, right? Because no one wants to die. Many would like to just reject death. However, Jesus, right before his death, his death had said words no one would have imagined. And, and those words were... It is finished, which is recorded in verse 30 of today's text. So he declares, it is finished, even in the midst of the great pain of the cross, saying that he has completed all his missions. So today, I will take a deeper look into the meaning of it is finished and how it can Teach us how to live our lives today. So let's look at our first point. Jesus is the one who fulfilled Father's will. Jesus is the one who fulfilled Father's will. Majority of people have goals and live most of, the, of their lives trying to achieve these goals. But these goals are set on the things of this world. And then they celebrate these worldly accomplishments. These goals are set on worldly standards. How much money am I making? How much fame, honor am I getting? However, God has given each of us missions, heavenly missions, missions from the heavens, which carry high expectations God wants us living accordingly to wants us living according to heavenly standards and he wants us to fulfill the goals and missions given to us Jesus also did not live according to humanly goals but lived according to the will of God. John chapter 6, verse 38 to 39. When we look here, it says, 
For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing, but raise it up on the last day. Jesus came to this world to fulfill God's will and complete the work of redemption. So he came to fulfill this one mission. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 says, Do not think that I, ha I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. To fulfill. When we look at John chapter 12, verse 50, we can know that Jesus always worked believing that God's commandment is eternal life. John chapter 12, verse 50, we can see that here. So therefore, Jesus, he did not regard his own life as precious and focused only on completing the Father's will. So in today's text, the phrase, it is finished, is teleo in Greek, teleo, and it means to finish, to complete, to reach a destination. And this term is said by a servant to his or her owner after finishing all assigned tasks. And that's why even in the English translation Bible, it's written as, it is finished, rather than, I have finished. That it is finished, not, I have finished. So this phrase is not said when a mission has been half completed or incomplete, but rather when all tasks and works have been fulfilled all according to God's will. So John chapter 17 verse 4 says here, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Having accomplished. Teleo. Thus, Jesus' life was a life of teleo, a life of fulfilling Father's will. So you and I, today, we must also live this life of teleo, where we fulfill Father's will. So then, what specifically did Jesus accomplish? One, he finalized the word of the Bible. He finalized the word of the Bible. Acts chapter 13 verse 29 uses the term teleo and talks about how Jesus fulfilled all the scriptures written in the Bible as prophesied in the Old Testament. So Jesus' life was a life where he dedicated his life to, to Father God. So that's why if you see the works of Christ were not meaningless or transient, but every one of his doings were to fulfill the scriptures of the Bible. He was wholly dedicated to fulfilling God's work. Jesus didn't just come out of nowhere to this earth, right? From, from the moment Jesus was born, he became the fulfillment of the word. He came as the Messiah from the descendant of the woman, just as promised in the Bible. And also, it is clearly stated in today's text that Jesus saying, I am thirsty on the cross were to fulfill the words of the Old Testament. So after all the scriptures were fulfilled, that's when Jesus said, it is finished. So our second mini point, he fulfilled eternal atonement. He fulfilled eternal atonement. 
Jesus had no choice but to die because of sin. And he is the one who took on all sins of mankind and fulfilled our eternal atonement with his blood on the cross. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 says, And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So even in the midst of countless sufferings and being beaten, torn on the cross, Jesus glorified God by fulfilling the work of redemption and reporting its success to God. He's saying, God, Father God, I have done everything that you wanted me to do. It is finished. He's reporting this to God. Here, it is finished shows that Christ's redemptive work has been fully fulfilled on the cross. And at the same time, it shows that the effect of the redemptive work continues forever. The Bible testifies that Jesus accomplished redemption that is effective for all eternity, not only for those living at that time of the past, but also for those in the present and the future. So let's look at our mini point number three. He completed the Sabbath. He completed the Sabbath. Jesus restored the rest that Adam lost. And that is why Jesus is called the Lord of Sabbath as stated in Matthew chapter 12, verse 8, Lord of Sabbath. Here he's called Lord because it was through Christ that the commandment of Sabbath day was fulfilled. And that's why Jesus came as flesh onto this fallen world to proclaim true rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So for you and I today, we have this eternal rest, eternal peace because of what Jesus did for us. So likewise, just as written, Jesus came to this world to fulfill the work of redemption, which is testified numerous times in the Bible. He gave his all and devoted himself to this one thing that will fulfill Father's will. And then let's look at John chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. To accomplish his work. So here it's teleo. Let's look at our second point. We must also live a life that fulfills his will every single day. We must also live a life that fulfills his will every single day. Jesus himself redeemed us by hanging on the cross and became the first fruits of resurrection, as stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. And so now, he has entrusted us with the mission of teleo. And so we have the mission to complete the will of the history of redemption on the foundation that Jesus made. If Jesus lived his whole life for the Father's will, then we, believers, should be able to also follow Christ and live a life of obedience that fulfills Father's will. So when we look in the Bible, there are many people recorded who fulfilled their missions. If you look in Hebrews chapter 11, 
It records all of the forefathers who fulfilled the, their heavenly duties and faith. And the chapter itself, it uses the term by faith. So by faith, this person did da 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 da. And by faith, this person did this and this and this. So let's look at Abraham. So from the moment God calls upon Abraham, the father of faith, Abraham lived his whole life obeying God's word till the end. When Abraham was first called, he left his native land, his people, and his father's house to go to the land indicated by God. And then his faith of obedience was fulfilled uh, perfected actually once he offered up Isaac to God when we look at Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 and on we see that in order for God to test Abraham's faith he gave him this one final test and that test was to sacrifice Isaac as an offering to God why did God request this because this was God's way of teaching him that everything belongs to him. And this was also the ultimate test of Abraham's obedience and faith to God. Abraham completely obeyed God's commands, as we know. James chapter 2, verse 21 to 23 says, Was not Abraham our father justified? by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar, you see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected, and the scripture was fulfilled. So here we see faith was perfected. So it uses the term teleo. This is saying how Abraham completely fulfilled all that God commanded and perfected his faith. And so that's why we call Abraham the father of faith today. Let's look at our second person. That's Jacob. Genesis chapter 49 verse 33 records Jacob's last moment. And we see that it says here... When Jacob finished charging his sons, he drew his feet into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. So on the verge of his deathbed, Jacob, with his weak, unsteady body, he blessed each and every one of his children. And then he worshipped God at the head of his bed and then lay quietly with his feet together, straight and undisturbed, and then he breathed his last. Here, he drew his feet signifies an attitude of concentration and devotion. This is proof of how Jacob's life was unwavering and wholly devoted to God until his death. It is the act of having fulfilled the duties God gave and now drawing the feet together to start the journey toward eternal home, which is heaven. How great is this? How great of an image of an act this is? Just like Jacob, May you and I also completely fulfill the work of God and be able to draw our feet together in peace as we head toward our eternal heavenly home. And then let's look at our third person we're going to talk about, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul also lived a life of teleo, just like Jesus Christ had. No matter how much tribulation, persecution Paul faced, he devoted his life to fulfill his heavenly mission. Acts chapter 20 verse 23 to 24 says, especially in verse 24, it says here, 
But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. So, Apostle Paul, he devoted his life. He never took his life as precious. And just as Jesus gave his life in fulfilling the mission of atonement, Apostle Paul also followed in the footsteps of Christ and gave up his life to fulfill the mission of preaching the gospel. And so before he died, Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 through 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So Apostle Paul is confidently sharing how he has finished the race of completing God's work, that he has fulfilled God's will. So we must be like Paul and be the saints who can also give such confession of faith. So besides these three people, there's definitely so many, so many more peop- others who, who are recorded in the Bible who fulfilled their mission work as well. Let's think about our children or, or kids in general. Whatever they do, they do it with, without regret. Look at my, my daughter. So my daughter Lily, when she draws, it's it's very cute, right? And although over the over the years it's it's gotten her drawing's gotten better, sometimes I can't tell what she's drawing, to be honest. But um, Lily, she she gets so confident with her drawing, and she gets so proud, and so she comes to me with such a happy face, saying, "Hey, look, look at my drawing." So how, where does that confidence come from? But it, it comes from the idea that she's doing this without regret. There's no regret. It's, it's the act of being able to do something without caring for what others think. So even if we are weak, even if we might not be as skillful, skillful as someone else or talented as someone else, if we are doing something without caring about being judged by what others think, then we are doing it without regret. Then there's no reason to be comparing ourselves with others. Who cares if you can't draw too well compared to others, right? As long as we are able to fulfill our work, what we need to do for God, then that's all that matters. Then we can live a life of teleo without regret, a life of faith that lives without regret. So that we can be proud and we can come to God and say, it is finished. So I pray that we can have such faith in the name of the Lord. Let's look at our conclusion. Teleo's life represents a life of faith that has no regrets. A life with no regrets. As we live each day, 365 of our li- day- days of our lives, How many times can we confess to God that we lived a life of teleo? Many of us have regrets, right? We we have thoughts and we think to ourselves, maybe I should have been better. Maybe I should have been more patient. Maybe I should have given more. Maybe I should have lived a life being more thankful. Or should have lived being more faith, more more um, thankful or and faithful. Been better to my wife, husband. We live a life full of regret. But such life full of regrets is a failed life. So there's an old song. um, That song, it's a a trot. And the lyrics um, basically is saying you should take advantage and do better when, when it's there. While it's there. So while we have the opportunity, we should take it. Is what, um, 
what I'm trying to get at with this reference to this song. So when we live our lives each day with no regret, that is a life full of blessings. Jesus had no regrets. And this is also evident when he says, it is finished. And furthermore, Romans Romans chapter 11 verse 29 also states that God has no regrets. Therefore, Father God has called us, chose us, gave us faith and grace, hope, and with his great love has given us life. So we must live our lives truly thankful for all that he has done. We don't want to disappoint him. So then how should we live our lives? And this is by living a life that risks its life. It is not saying to die, to actually die. But basically it's saying, having a thought such as, um, if we do at least the bare minimum, we should still be guaranteed to get into heaven. Having having um, these type of thoughts where you think, oh, volunteering? Helping with lunch prep, eh, that's so tiring, that's so boring, I don't want to do that. Why bother going to Wednesday service, dawn service, when I could just go to church on Sunday only? So such thoughts, such faith is very lukewarm, where we're not giving ourselves up, we're not risking anything, we're not risking our lives. So such act will not get us into heaven. And Romans chapter 14, verse 23 says, But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because his eating is not from faith, and whatever is not from faith is sin. Sin is no different. It's saying here that whatever not done in faith is sin. So whether we meet people, work, or study at school, we must do with faith. Doing housework or taking care of our family also must be done with faith. Whether someone is looking or not, we must play our parts in fulfilling our missions with faith and sincerity. And we have to glorify God through this. And this is what the life of Teleo is. Who cares if someone is watching us, judging us? That's what the life of Teleo is. We doing our part. No matter how many times we go through the season of Lent, there is no meaning if there is no change in our lives. Now, each of us must live our lives fulfilling the work of redemption. I must perfect my own faith. Just like Abraham did. I must perfect my own faith. And then furthermore, I must pray for my husband, my wife, children, and perfect my family's faith. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. So our faith, knowledge, measure of stature, like all of this must be fulfilled. So until all of this is fulfilled, we are still working. So we must live to fulfill Father's will, just as we have praised this morning. So I pray that we can become saints who fulfill the will of the Father rather than our own will and live a life of teleo where we can daily say in confidence, today too, it is finished. So I pray this in the name of the Lord. Father God, who is full of love and grace, you have given us this precious Lord's Day where you have given us your precious word to learn about how to perfect our faith, 
and live a life of teleo. Every day that we are living, we want to live where we are walking with you. And in whatever situation we are in, may we keep our faith and may we not live according to our will, but according to your will. Father, you have chosen each and every one of us and given us a mission. May we fulfill this mission without regret, just as we have learned today. And in doing so, may we bring joy and glorify you that we may have this understanding of the life of Christ as well through this. Father, may you enable each and every one of us to be wholly devoted to this mission work that you have given us. Please remember each and every one of us here in this sanctuary, listening to your word. And we pray that in everything that we do, may we bring you joy. And we pray that all of the worries, all of our prayer topics that we want to pour upon you, may they be heard by you and answered. And may you pour all of your many blessings upon the heads of us and our family members at this time. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us give glory to God with our applause.